Okay, um, best of luck to everybody who's got their exam coming up in the next few weeks. We, we really wish you well. Um, so we're looking at the general training module this week um, at the writing task one, which is always a letter for general training. Um, and in this uh, webinar, we're going to particularly look at letters of complaint. Okay. Um, so what are we going to look at? Um, we're going to look at planning and structuring your letter. And then we're going to look particularly at the kind of language, the kind of content that you might want to put into a complaint letter. Okay. Uh, so um, just to begin with some overall ideas. So what can you tell me about the task one for general training in terms of word count, how long you should spend, anything like that? What kind of general information? Okay, yeah, that's right, Habiba. It's a minimum of 150 words. Uh, and also Habiba, yes, 20 minutes is what they recommend that you spend on that, okay? And it's always a letter, okay? It can be a formal letter, it can be an informal letter, uh, but it's always a letter. And it's a very, very common topic to, uh, to write a letter of complaint on something. Okay. Um, as a general start, anybody actually had to write a letter of complaint about something? If you have, can you just tell us in the in the chat? If you can tell all panelists and attendees, it's good if everybody can see what you're writing. Uh, just tell me what what you wrote about. Okay. Okay. So yeah, Bola ninety wrote about living arrangements. Anybody else actually written a letter of complaint in, in real life? Okay, very good, Naveed. Poor air, air conditioning facilities. Very good. Complaint about my Uber driver. I imagine that's quite a common one. Very good, Mohammed. Okay, missing jacket. Okay, good. So, you know, we've, we've done this quite a lot in, in real life as well. Okay. All right, um, and what we're going to do now is uh, look at some of the more, more common ones. I think we're getting a lot of good common ones there about like restaurant food, uh, not changing rooms, being a bit mixed up. Okay, um, so if you look at the first picture, um, what kind of complaint might we be looking at there? might we be complaining about <laughs> okay good yes <laughs> some problem with the hotel and so he's got to go or the problem with the car rental service i think is what we're we're looking at <laughs> he hates his life well that could be a more general one not sure who you could complain to about that uh okay um what about this one okay yeah so the the car there's some problem with the car what about the second picture Okay. Uh, okay. Very good. Habibat. Yeah. Indrani. Noisy neighbor. Some kind of complaint where you need to write to the neighbor. Maybe they had a party. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. An annoying neighbor. Exactly. Ashwara. Um, okay. What about the next one? What do you think we are looking at there? Uh, okay, yeah, I think Siddharth's got it. Yeah, so lost lost or missing baggage. Yeah, so writing a complaint to the airline company, your your baggage has gone. Or it could be, uh, uh, Vika Villa, it could be a delay as well as another possibility that you might write about. Okay. Um, and the last one, I think somebody already had to actually do this in a, in real life. So what are we looking at there? Yes, okay, so either the food or the service or some kind of complaint related to um, a restaurant, okay? So these are very typical letters of complaint that you get in, in IELTS, you know, lost luggage, stolen items, things like that comes up quite a lot, okay? So in all of these cases, would you say that you'd be writing a formal letter or would you be writing an informal letter? Uh, 
Okay, very typically the, the letter of complaint is, is formal because you're writing to a company in most cases. Okay, uh, and Navid's right, okay, the second one, the neighbor, would be semi-formal. So in that case, you're not writing to a company, you're writing to an individual, but the situation is quite delicate, so you would still, you know, want to be quite careful in how you wrote it. You wouldn't be going, hey, hi, how are you doing? Okay, so let's have a look uh, a bit more detail. So if you have a look at this, this is our example letter that we are going to work with today. Very typical example. It's from the first picture that we looked at there. Um, yeah, if you know them, that's exactly right, Kumar. Yeah. Uh, so you have a situation, first of all, you have some background information. And this is true of all the letters. They're all organized in the same way. Then it tells you who you are writing to. So in this case, to the company, to the rental company. And then you have three bullet points, three things that you need to talk about in the letter, okay? And to get a good mark in task achievement, you need to have one paragraph on each of those points with specific details in. Okay, so specific details would be fully developed bullet points, which is what you're looking for to get a seven or more than a seven. Okay, and they give you the beginning with dear. You don't need to write addresses, you don't need to write dates, anything like that. You just start from the first one. Okay, um, yeah, this is the general training module. It's a different task one for the academic. That's right. Okay. So <clears throat> very important before you start writing that you plan what you're going to say. Sorry. <clears throat> so that means that when you are actually writing, you can focus on the grammar. You can focus on the linking phrases, the vocabulary. You're not thinking about content, okay? So make sure you've got your content ready before you go, all right? Which means that for each of those bullet points, you want to note down your ideas, okay? What are you going to put into your letter, okay? So first thing that you need to do is underline the key words, okay? What are you really focusing on in this letter? So in this case, looking at the task, what do you think would be the key words? What would you want to underline here? Okay, very good. Yes, you rented a car. You've got to have the situation foremost. What else would you underline there? Okay, very good, a number of problems, okay. And what else? Okay, yeah, problems with the car, number of problems, what else would you underline? Okay, very good, yes, uh, again, they, you've already called them and it still hasn't been fixed, okay? That's there, so that needs to go into your letter. Remember, anything that's in the task needs to go into the letter. Yeah, problem is not yet resolved, Kumar, exactly. Okay, what else would you underline? What else do you think would be uh, something that would help you focus on the... Yeah, so basically what you would want to do is to underline as well the three introductions to those three bullet points. Exactly, the action you want them to take, introduce yourself. So you're very focused on what you have to do in each part, okay? First thing you do before you do anything else, it really, really focuses you down, okay? All right, so let's look at that in more detail. So then a couple of ideas, just a few key words for each of those three areas before you start writing, okay? Um, so, if you were introducing yourself, what kinds of things might you want to say? Or how might you want to introduce yourself so they're going to pay attention to you? Okay, you, you can give your name. What, what else would be quite key? 
Okay, very nice, Gurgan. I like that. Yeah, a regular customer, very important. Okay, or a loyal customer, Naveed, very nice. Or, yeah, you know, you're the company that you work for, long term member, very good. Yeah, okay. Um, so you're introducing yourself. Maybe you talk about the, you know, that you're a particular member of this rental company. Um, what else? Looking at the pictures, what else are you going to? need to tell them so that they can help you okay that's what yeah so um that's what we're thinking of the 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 car you know that you rented that are going to need to know that okay uh and yes kumar very important you're going to tell them why you're writing okay um yes yeah, so the type of car maybe the registration number that kind of information Okay, then you have to explain the problems. Notice it says a number of problems. So it's not enough to just put one, you need to have definitely two, okay? Uh, so what kind of problems might you have with a rented car? <laughs> That's, I'm not sure they can help you with that problem, Navid. <laughs> okay, so no AC, no spare tire, very good. Headlights not working, problem with the engine. Okay, not enough space for the baggage, I quite like that. Problem with the baggage, <laughs> it smells awful. Okay, yeah, there was some kind of accident. That's, that's not really their fault, but yeah. Um, Okay, I think, I think you're the driver, so that's probably not. Okay, e overheating, yes. So something is, couple of things which are wrong, could be not properly keen, that's very good. AC, engine, headlights, those kind of common things are very good, okay. Uh, then we need to think about what action you would like the company to take. And you need to give a specific action. You, you can't just say, I would like you to take some action. You, want, you have to suggest what you would like them to do. Okay. Um, so first of all, you're going to say you phoned and they didn't resolve the issue. That's important. Um, yes, yeah, so a replacement car, very nice, improve their services. What else could you say in terms of what action you would like to be done? Okay. Yeah, you're right, Kumar. Keep it simple and easy to explain. You'd like a refund, you'd like a replacement. Very good. Okay. So, you know, just very quickly, couple of minutes, but get down that key information. Okay. So that you're not thinking about that as you're writing, okay? Um, so we're going to, to just put down what we're going to use in the example letter. So we've got the type of car, we've got frequent customer, very important. And, you know, maybe you're a member of their club, their platinum pl club, maybe you're a gold member, something like that works quite nicely. Um, we're going to go with indicator lights are broken and the car won't start it's a pretty major problem okay and we would like them to replace the car to apologize and to provide us with some kind of compensation which is exactly what navid said okay so very quick simple little table on the question paper make um, a few notes there and then you can see um, that's all there ready for you okay so uh, let's think about the structure now. So how do you structure a letter? What are the different components of a letter that you're going to need to include? Any ideas? How do we start with the, with the letter? First we, okay, kind of like a headache or some kind of opening. Okay, very good. So yeah, Kum, uh, Kumar's written salutation, introduction, all of the bullet points, and then a closing. Yeah, so we're going to start with an opening, the salutation, then we're going to go through those three bullet points. Okay, so we're describing the problem, we're making a request, and then we need to close the letter appropriately. Okay, and that's you know, this format is going to be the same for all of the letters that you are going to do. Okay. 
Um, and because it's a letter, we have letter conventions. So we have, you know, very specific stock phrases that we use uh, for certain kinds of functions. Um, so we're going to look at some of those phrases now and we're going to put them into the correct area. Okay. So um, where would you put the first one? I'm writing to complain about. Okay. You can just write one, two, three, or four. Okay. Very good, Navid. So right at the beginning. Okay. Very important with the uh, with the letter for the task achievement, clear purpose. Okay, so the clear purpose right at the beginning, why are you writing? Okay, I'm writing to complain, I'm writing to request, whatever it is, I'm writing to apologize, right there at the very beginning. Okay, and what about the next one? Where is that going to be? Okay, very good, that's at the end. Okay. And what about the next one? Put that. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'm extremely dissatisfied. And then the next one. Okay, good. Very useful expression for making a request. Okay, how about the next introductory phrase? Okay, very good. So you're still describing the issues that have been coming up. And the next one would be, okay, absolutely, would be a request. Okay, and the next one. Okay, very good, guys. Again, explaining the purpose of your letter right at the beginning. Okay, very nice, Abdul. I'm writing this lesson to express my disappointment. Okay, a full refund. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that's how you're going. That's what you expect to get at the end. Okay, as a result. Yeah, okay, Sandy is there. So if you're having to describe a problem or a situation, it's always really good to finish that with a consequence. What was the negative consequence of this situation? It's a really good way to end that paragraph or that bullet point, okay? Uh, I look forward to your reply. Okay, great. And I'm writing to express my dissatisfaction. Okay, very good, yeah. Okay, so again, clear purpose right at the beginning. And the last one would be, okay, very good. Yeah, again, making a suggestion. So requesting or making a suggestion for what you would like them to do. Okay, so that's the structure. But we also have to have the greeting and sign off. So the greeting right at the beginning and the sign off right at the end. Okay. Um, so how should we introduce, what's the salutation for a formal letter? What do we usually, how do we usually start a formal letter? Okay, very good. Yes, so dear, it could be dear Mr. Smith, or it could be dear sir slash madam. Okay, those are really the, the only ways that you can uh, introduce that. Okay, so... Those are some examples of how we would start a formal letter, okay? You can't use anything like, hi, hello, that's only there for a letter to a friend, okay? All right. And then we have the sign-off at the end, and the sign-off and the greeting are very closely linked, okay? Um, yeah, so if it's dear sir, madam, you would, how would you follow on from dear sir, madam? Get it? Just be careful here, be careful with your conventions. Okay, not quite sure about that one. It's always a tricky one. Okay, Indrani's there. Yours faithfully. Okay, so dear sir, madam, yours faithfully. Okay, if you start with a name, which you're unlikely to have if you're writing to a company. You're probably going to be starting, dear sir, madam. Uh, but if you have a name, then you will be finishing with yours sincerely. 
okay? It's basically the letter convention. Um, it's not really, you know, there's no particular issue why, but dear sir, madam, followed by yours faithfully, dear name, followed by yours sincerely. You just got to remember the way they go together, okay? Um, and again, in this case, we, because it's a letter, it's not an email, all the best, best regards, best wishes is not going to be acceptable, okay? So it's very important to, um, F for F. I'm not quite sure how that works, Kumar, but if it works for you, that's good. <laughs> Maybe the other way around. Okay. Um, but probably formal letter of complaint, dear sir, madam, yours faithfully. Okay. And, you know, we always have a comma after these, dear sir, madam, comma, yours faithfully, comma, that's correct punctuation for the letter conventions. And again, in task achievement, correct letter conventions are very important to get a good score in that. Okay. All right. So now let's look at how we're going to open. So we've started probably dear sir, madam. Okay. Uh, so just to remind you what the situation was and what the three bullet points were. Okay. So as we said, we're going to start, dear sir, madam, comma, okay. And then we're going to look at some of the elements you need to put in here. So as we said, very, very important, right off the bat, purpose of the letter, okay. And also introducing yourself. So you can put these together in this case because they're very closely linked. So... I'm going to give you the introductions. I'd like you to kind of finish off the phrases or the sentences. Okay. So remember what we said before with the details. Dear sir, madam, I am a, how are you going to continue that? Okay. So yeah, I'm a loyal customer. I'm a, a maybe a frequent customer, a regular customer. Very good, a member of your Platinum Car Club. We don't tend in, the convention in, in England is, it, we don't really put the name right at the beginning. Yeah, you, but you introduce, you know, who you are in relation to the company, okay? So a frequent customer, okay, or a, a, a loyal customer, okay? Then purpose, so I am writing two, how can we continue that? Okay, very good to, yeah, to make a complaint to any other ideas that you have for that one. Okay, we went with complain, register my complaint, yeah. Okay, complain about, etc. Uh, you don't need to put your name at the beginning, Kumar. You just need to say who you are in relation to the company. They, they won't, it, it's just not necessary to put your name. Okay. So I'm writing to complain about the vehicle which I rented. Okay. And very specific information. Okay. So again, in task achievement, fully developed bullet points, which means very specific details. Okay. So how could we continue this? The vehicle which I rented, okay, yeah, last week, or, okay, any more specific information? Okay, from your London branch, we've gone with on the 15th of May. Okay, again, more specific, the better. Okay, all right, so, Let's have a look at some of the useful uh, vocabulary there. So frequent customer, you could use that in lots of different situations. If it was a, riding to an airplane, train service, that would still work. Okay. Uh, the vehicle which I rented is quite useful. And your London branch. Okay, so branch, very nice, kind of high level, less common term there that you could add it. Okay. Um, so, and very, you know, done very efficiently. We've got all of that information in two sentences and that's your opening, okay? So after that, we go on to describe the problem, okay? Which, this is where the key information is. 
So this is probably where you're going to have quite a lot of detailed information. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit bigger. The, the opening and closing are going to be fairly short, but this one is going to be quite long. Okay, so details, 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 really, really important. Okay, so uh, we're going to give you some phrases. Again, let's, you can continue them. So the car I rented is a... What did you rent? What would you put here? The car I rented is a, for example, okay, an Audi, yeah, a white USV, SUV, sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay, so for example, a Mercedes S type, and then you give the registration number. Okay, again, very, very detailed. Yeah, okay. All right. When I collected the car, I was assured that. Okay, so a little bit of background here. What could you say? Uh, okay, before we go into the actual problems, we're starting with, with when you actually pick up the car and the rental company tells you, uh, yeah, I was assured that this was in perfect condition. I would not have any issues with the car. Okay, exactly, something like that. So we put in good working condition. So, you know, that's a really nice way to start off. And then you can compare that to the problem. So you've got a good contrast there. So, however, I quickly noticed a fault with, oh, mint condition, Rasod. I like that very much. That is very, a very, very good phrase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the headlights, the car engine, whatever the specific issue you want to go with. Okay. Making sure you've got the exact, the precise word for that part of the car. Uh, if you remember, we were talking about the indicator lights. So that's what we're going with. Okay. And what could we say? Which were... Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay, we, we've actually used fault. So faulty is a really good word, but we probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to sort of repeat the word. So yeah, not working properly would be a good, okay, yeah, not functioning, broken, quite simply, something like that, okay? Uh, so we've got, as I think Kumar said, you know, we're, we're, we're joining everything together in a very smooth way, and we're going to look at that in more detail in a moment, okay? Then to make matters worse, okay, so piling on the problems here, when I, what could, how could we continue that? Oops, what's on that? Okay, when I started the car, okay, or when I tried to start the car, okay, took the highlight, went out. Okay, yeah. Okay, so when I tried to start it after leaving it parked overnight, it failed to start. Okay. Okay. But yeah, try turning on the car, whatever it is, then it didn't start. It failed to start. It wouldn't start. Okay. Very good. Okay. So we've got our two specific problems there. Remember, it's a number of problems. So you've got to put more than one there. Okay. Then we have a consequence. So what would be, what could you put in this case? What's the consequence of, of your rented car not starting? What could you put here? Okay, very nice. I was late for a meeting. I missed my meeting. Something like that. Okay, well, yeah, I had to take a taxi. I couldn't make it for my presentation. Okay, very good. Okay. So something like that. Again, nice specific consequence of the problems. Okay, I lost my job. <laughs> so quite serious, but yeah, that could be it. Okay, I was late for a date. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that would work. Uh, and then remember that in the introduction of the task, it says that the problem hasn't been solved yet. Okay. My road trip was a disaster. Yes. Very good. Okay. So I called, how can we continue the next bit? So I called, okay, very nice. I called customer care. Yeah. Or customer service. Okay. Or I called several times. Yes. Okay, very good. So customer service department, we often say customer support. Um, okay, a week ago and was reassured. So before we had assured, now we're being reassured 
that I would, how do you think they're saying that they're going to solve the problem? Okay, very good. Yeah, okay. We've, we've gone for receiver replacement, but yeah, any of those would work within 24 hours. Again, specific, specific, specific. Receive help within the next, next few minutes. That's quite good, yeah. Uh, however, it's extremely disappointing that... How are we going to continue that? Remember that it that hasn't been resolved yet. Okay, no, no action. Yes, no action's been taken yet. The matter has been ignored. Okay, quite useful to use a present perfect there because it's up until the point when you're writing the letter. Okay, uh, so I haven't had, okay, any communication with them since then. Okay, nothing has been done. I'm left high and dry. It's a great expression, Aaron. It's a little bit informal, but it's a very, very nice expression. Yeah, very good for the speaking. Okay, so you can see there's quite a lot of information there. It's very, very detailed. We've covered more than one point, several problems, and we've mentioned the fact that we called and nothing happened, okay? Uh, so that's our explaining the problems with the consequence, okay? So looking at this in a bit more detail. So we're talking about a specific event in the past. So all the way through here, we're using past simple, okay? You can see the verbs have been highlighted in blue. Uh, so any specific event in the past, always using past simple. Okay. And lots of linking phrases. You've got to make that a very smooth connection between the different issues that you're talking about. Okay. So when, however, to make matters worse, as a result, since then, clear timelines as well going in there as well. So it's very specific. Okay. Okay, um, so making a request. So now you're going to ask uh, what or tell them or ask them to do something for you. Okay, so what action would you like the company to take? Uh, it's a little bit informal, Aaron, I would say. Like I said, it's a fantastic expression. Um, it does sound quite annoyed. I think it's a touch informal in this case, you yeah? know. Okay, so just to remind you what we said we would like them to, um, to do for you, okay? Uh, so you're making the request. Uh, so yes, very important, the register here. It, you've got to be very definite with your request, but you don't want to sound like, you know, you're going to take them the, to the police or, or threaten them in some way. So sometimes candidates write a, a rather a very strong request, which actually kind of teeters into threatening situations. So firm, but polite, okay? So um, as we can see, firm, but polite, I would like to, so how could you carry on from that? How could you continue that sentence? I would like to, mm -hmm, think about, make sure that you've got the right form to continue from, I would like to. Um, okay, request a refund. Uh, request is very nice, formal. Um, or receive, again, get, a little bit informal. Receive is a little bit more formal. Um, I would like you to fix the problem. Okay, so I would like to request an immediate replacement for the car, for example. Um, or I would like to have the car replaced. Uh, LR, that's very good as well. Okay. And then we use a different kind of, re of, of request, so a different phrase, but we're still making a request. So I would appreciate, what would you appreciate? How could you continue that introduction? Any ideas? Remember that we asked, I think it was, a, it was an apology and compensation. Okay, I would appreciate it if you could provide compensation or some form of compensation. Okay, or I would appreciate an apology and appropriate compensation. Um, I would appreciate if, it if I could get a discount, that would be quite nice. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, compensation for. Oh, very nice. Con, con key for what I have been through. Yes. Or here for the inconvenience caused me. Okay. The mental stress. I like that. That's very good. Yeah. So again, you know, remember, put in the consequence of these you know how did it affect you negatively okay um just one thing if you use the expression i would appreciate and then you have a, a phrase beginning with if then you need to say i would appreciate it if okay that is the expression so i would appreciate something or i would appreciate it if you could and then continue on like that so it's a very small word but it's very important in that phrase to include the it okay okay uh so again let's look at some of the very useful phrases we've uh, we're getting here so an immediate replacement okay so putting an adjective there you know it adds shows greater manipulation it's a good collocation Appropriate compensation, again, very nice collocation there. The inconvenience caused to me, very, very useful for a letter of complaint, okay? All right, and then we need to close off in some way, okay? Um, so here we've got the full letter, so you can have a, a look at that. And what would you put right at the end? Okay, how could you, okay, good, yeah. Okay, I look forward to hearing from you, that works. Remember looking forward a little bit more informal. Okay, so you just want a short sentence. Anybody else got any ideas? Okay, uh, maybe we've gone for, I look forward to your reply. Okay, I look forward to your reply. I look forward to hearing from you as soon as possible. Remember, it's always with an I-N-G, okay? Um, so yeah, I look forward is a little bit more formal than I am looking forward. So you want to use the simple form when you are looking at this, okay? So that's the whole one there. Um, so we can see how we've divided it up. Uh, introduction and purpose then we're describing the problems, then we are saying what we want them to do, and then we have a closing statement, which are, again, these are letter conventions, they're quite stock, um, and then we close it off, okay? All right, and then just put a name at the end, okay? Uh, so just a few tips, okay? Um, don't start writing, start, right away always make a plan always get the um get the details down first then you can focus on the other parts keep it to 20 minutes you really need 40 minutes for the um for the task too don't count your words it's a waste of time know how much 160 180 words looks like in your handwriting and download the IELTS answer sheet so you know what your handwriting looks like on the answer paper that you are given, okay? And on the website, you have a whole range of um, different writings for general training, for academic. Try and cover as many different ones as possible. The more you've thought about, uh, you know, the less of a shock you're going to get, the easier it is to, to um, deal with whatever it comes at. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, Any questions? Thank you very much, Anneli. <laughs> That's a great presentation. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, supplying all the different answers. You have some really nice language mm. there, some very creative uh, language. So great, great job. Um, we have a few of your questions uh, to go through in the Q&A. Feel free to add further questions. We have some time uh, to discuss them in, uh, in a moment. Before we do, I would just like to draw your attention to our premium services, which we offer on our website. Ah, we have the, the link to them on the slide here. 
Um, we offer a speaking and writing evaluation service, which you can book via our website. Um, for the writing, you can send in uh, your own example writing uh, to answer to questions on our website. And an IELTS examiner or former examiner will go through, give you an estimated grade, and send you very detailed feedback on your performance. Um, we offer a similar service for speaking. You can book time with a speaking examiner. They'll go through a full mock test with you. Uh, they'll give you some verbal feedback on your performance, your strengths, your weaknesses, what you can do to improve your score. And you'll also get a written report as well. So if you're interested in that, that's available via our website. Uh, it might be a good option for some of you if you're planning to take your test very soon. Um, it might give you that little push uh, you need to, to get uh, the best score possible. So um, that is our speaking service. Uh, we also have some upcoming webinars as well. You can check them out via our website. So yeah. Uh, Thank you very much, everyone, for the nice feedback. I'm glad you found that useful. Um, so, Anneli, shall we take a look at uh, some of the questions? Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, sorry, there's one in chat mm -hmm. that I just want to... Um, Awati um, is asking about whether you're stopped after 20 minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. You're not stopped after 20 minutes. You have one hour for both um, tasks. But the advice is, the recommendation is that you don't take any more than 20 minutes for the task mm -hmm. one, uh, because you really do need 40 minutes to do the essay. The essay is weighted more heavily, so it's more important to get a higher score in, in task two. Um, so, but no, you're not stopped. It's one hour for the whole writing paper. Yeah, yeah. So you should try to stop yourself because uh, no one will, yes, no yeah. one will stop you for you. They yeah. do mention in in the they do say twenty minutes is up, so you will know they kind of make an announcement, so you'll know you've done your first twenty minutes. Um, but yeah, they won't stop you for sure. Excellent. Um, so the first question uh, is from uh, Jess Preet uh, Singh, um, who is asking, how can I watch our past webinars, um, especially on task two? Um, Jess Preet, I'll put the link to that um, in the chat. It's uh, the link to our Facebook group. Uh, you'll be able to find all our webinars on there. So you'll be able to find them there in a moment. Um, I have a question from Gangang Priya. Uh, Priyasar, uh, who is asking, if we're aiming for a score of band eight, uh, what do you suggest for preparation? Wow. Um, question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very high score that they're yeah. requesting there. Um, you know, you're really going to have to develop everything very fully to get an eight. That's, that's really the main difference between a seven and an eight in, in task achievement and task response for the task two is that, you know, you really go into detail and you have a very full response to everything. So as we did there for each of the bullet points in the letter, very detailed, very full answer. Um, you're also going to need to use very precise vocabulary and, and what they call less common vocabulary, which is really advanced vocabulary, um, throughout. So again, a seven would be some evidence of high level vocabulary, some examples, but an eight would be sustained use of high level vocabulary. So, you know, really throughout you're showing examples of, of very sophisticated vocabulary. Mm. Um, majority of the sentences need to be error free to get an, an eight. You can still make a couple of mistakes, but you'd have to have, you know, certainly 90, 95% um, mm. is correct. Um, Good range of linking phrases it's totally possible um, those are the areas that you need to focus on to to get mm. to get an eight definitely definitely if, if i could uh, add as well i i know that one of the criteria um for grammar 
uh, is that you can't make uh, what they call a systematic mistake, mm. which is making the same type of mistake over and over. So maybe you have a problem using a or the, or using the ing form um, instead of the simple form. Mm -hmm. If you make that mistake multiple times, then that will prevent you from getting a band eight. So you'll only be able to get a band seven. Uh, so it can be difficult to correct these things. Um, and I know that this isn't uh, an option for some people, for many people, but having a time with an examiner who can give you detailed feedback on where you're making those mistakes can help you. Um, recently, we helped a student who previously had taken the test three times uh, and they uh, were awarded 6.5 every time. They did a full mock test with us um, along with some private tuition and they increased their grade to 8.5 on the first attempt. So that is a true story. Um, it just, it's possible to improve your score uh, with feedback and with uh, adequate tuition. So, um, yeah, uh, that's a, that's always an option for you. So uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, uh, Uday Saikiran uh, is asking, does writing our name, um, should we write our name in all types of letters, irrespective of the question type? So is it okay to write your name at the end of every type of letter? Um, yeah, I, I would write your name. I, I, oh, there's a bit of a feedback there. Um, if it's an informal letter, then you're just going to write your first name. Mm. Yeah. Um, if it's a formal letter, you would write your full name, so your first name and surname. Um, and that's really the only difference that you're going to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Related to that, I've seen a couple of questions. Um, should we use our real name in the when writing... Uh, your name at the end of the letter? Uh, I mean, it doesn't really make any difference to the, to the examiner. They're not going to pay any attention to that. It's probably quicker to write your own name than to think of a name, but it, it, it really doesn't matter in the slightest. Yeah. And finally, on the subject of names, um, do we write our name? How do we write our name after yours faith, faithfully? Should we leave a line um, before writing our name? Mm -hmm. Yes, so you're going to have, you know, you're signing off, yours sincerely or yours faithfully, gap, your mm. name. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's, again, a letter convention. And again, after dear sir, madam or dear name, you should leave a line and then start, I am writing Etc. Yeah. Et yeah. mm -hmm. Nice. Have um, more of a, uh, a statement from anonymous attendee. Hello, anonymous. <laughs> I believe if you're the same anonymous, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> anonymous is saying thanks for a great session, Annalie. Did you move to a new house? <laughs> <laughs> anonymous is very observant, isn't he? I, I I am in the process of moving to a new house with yeah. very nice wooden beams on the ceiling. So. Um, Yes, in the process, uh, but it's going very well. Thank you very much, <laughs> Anonymous, for noticing. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for your feedback in the chat, guys. It's really nice to hear the positive feedback and that you found this useful. Um, we have a few more questions uh, to go through. So let's see from Navid um, is asking, what is the most, po most important part of a complaint letter to focus on? Uh, most important part, and to be honest, this is the same for all of the letters, is a very clear purpose at the beginning of the letter, um, you know, to complain, to make a complaint, to express my dis dissatisfaction, and detail, okay, very detailed, very specific points for each of the bullet, uh, for each of those bullet points that you get in the task. Um, but any kind of letter, to be honest, the same things uh, it, that you need to focus on. Okay. Um, sorry, I just want to answer. Kumar's written one in the chat. Uh, your friendly colleague is going to leave the company during your absence. Would that be a formal or semi-formal letter? Um, it would be semi-formal if you didn't know them very well, which I think is, is what you are saying. Uh, it wouldn't be formal. Um, but yeah, I can appreciate it. It's a work situation, so it's not really a, 
hi, hey, how are you? Uh, so I would say semi-formal for that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, uh, Aisha Wari, Aisha Waria, um, sorry if I'm not saying that right, Aisha Waria is asking, is it compulsory uh, to not use contractions um, in formal letters? So should we avoid contractions in formal letters? Yeah, avoid contractions in the formal letters and conversely, use contractions in the letters, the personal letters to friends, just to show that you're using informal language. Similarly for the task two, I see a lot of contractions in the essay. Don't use any contractions in the task. It's always formal. Don't use any contractions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A um, couple of quick questions uh, from the chat. Um, uh, someone has asked what would be the score for this essay? Um, I think we can agree it would be a band nine. Um, it's pretty high level. It's very accurate. It covers all the points. There's lots of detail, um, high level vocabulary. Um, so I would Personally, I would give it a nine. Um, I don't know about, about you, Annalie, if you're a bit Abs more. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very hard marker, but I would still give that one a nine. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Um, although um, a few people, including um, MD Humayun, in, uh, ha have asked, shouldn't the sign-off be yours faithfully in this case? Because it began with sir or madam. So, uh, there's, we, we mentioned earlier that we should use yours mm -hmm. faithfully when it's mm -hmm. sir, madam. So there's a possibility this is um, in, yeah, a small, small mistake. With there's the a little bit down there. But yes, no, you're right. Dear sir, madam should, should finish with yours <laughs> faithfully. Band score I believe decrease. I am right there. Am I? <laughs> yeah, Band score I, I think so. I, I don't know how like much attention people pay to these conventions anymore. And I don't know if it would actually affect your your score in the test that wouldn't really affect it the conventions are the phrases like you know i would like i would appreciate it if you could and um i look forward to hearing from you so those phrases which uh, tell people what you know you you want those are the the key letter conventions that you need to start so to be honest, examiners aren't paying that much attention to, to, to the very end, but they're really looking at the phrases within the, uh, within the letter. But uh, yes, notice the mistake. So yes, yours faithfully. <laughs> you guys would make very <laughs> hard <laughs> markers. <laughs> they're turning the tables on the examiners, <laughs> marking <Good>. us down. <laughs> Excellent. Um, let's see, um, I have a quick question from Aaron in the chat, uh, who's asking, is going over the word limit okay? Is it okay to write more than 150 words? Yeah, it's, it's a minimum word count, so you have to be over that word count. There is no maximum word count, but, you know, if you write about 160, 170, 180 words, that's, that's going to be a good size detailed letter, letter without having too much in it. You don't really want to write too much, but there's no specific penalty for writing a lot. There's a very hard penalty for being under the word, word count. You lose a lot of marks, so you really, really don't want to be under the word count. Um, there's no heading. You don't need to write any heading. There's been a couple of questions for that. There's no heading for the letter. You just start... Dear sir, madam, or dear name, and then go straight into the letter. It's not necessary to put a heading. Okay, no maximum. There is no maximum word count. Definitely. Okay. Excellent. I think we have time for one or two more questions before we uh, wrap up for today. Uh, so Ahmed is asking, um, Ah, well, actually, related to the last question, Sandy Blue is asking if we go over the word limit, how much more is okay to, to write? Um, so. Yeah, as, as I said, sort of 160, 170 is, is going to be fine. I think you can easily say everything that you need to say in, in that length. Um, yeah. You know, some people are a bit more concise, some people are a bit more 
you know, flower rate, that's okay, but it's going to be somewhere around that. <laughs> Sometimes you cross 200. That, that's looking a little long, Kumar, I have to say. But it will eat into your time for task two, right? So. Well, yeah, exactly. The more you write, the longer it's going to take, the more potential you have for mistakes. So you do want to keep it quite concise. I would go 20, 10, 20, 30 words over the, over the word count. Don't need to do any more than that. Yeah. Great. Um, let's see, we have a question here. Um, I think this will be our last one uh, from Ahmed, who's asking, do we need to write a heading for the letter? So I guess a title. You don't need to write any title, any heading for the task one or the task two forget headings they're not important in, at any point okay excellent i'm afraid guys that's all we have time for so i'd just like to say a very big thank you uh to Anneli for presenting and fielding all your questions so thank you very much Anneli. it's been a lot of fun thank you everyone uh for joining us today it's been mm -hmm. great uh working with you and uh hearing your questions and your suggestions I've put a link to our different resources in the chat. Um, we have some more webinars coming up. You can find them on our website. We do have another session planned for uh, general training on the 6th of June, Thursday 6th of June for letter writing that will be looking at formal letters. So if you'd like to do more practice, you can join us then. So. Thanks very much. Thank you, Annalie. And uh, hopefully we'll see Thanks, you again. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Naveed, for your congratulations on my new house. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good and luck, yeah. everyone. Yeah, and best of luck if you're taking your test uh, before then. Okay, hope, uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll do well. All right. Bye, -bye. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. Bye-bye. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.